going on everybody welcome to the freaking nerds podcast uh-oh it is just you did the intro because mario's out and you said freaking freaking with a friggin k friggin nerd podcast friggin like friggin. with a g look this we already a, jacked up the beginning freaking podcast y'all yo this is mike and Britt. we are taking over the podcast episode for this week Unfortunately, Mario is still feeling under the weather uh, from uh, the past couple days, and so we have... And Lee's nursing him back to yep, health. We have let Lee uh, nurse the brother man back to health, and so we are here to take over the podcast for the week. And, and hopefully not get fired. Hopefully this doesn't go down in a ball of flames, but pretty much expect that to happen with us running this it's going to be scary. I hope he's not watching. We're going to just stress him out more. I know. He's probably like, oh, gosh, what did what did we do? I hope what did we do? resting peacefully. Right? Uh, we've got a, a crap ton of news to cover. It's insane. We've got multiple pages of text on, a, on our documents here. I don't even know, like, how we're going to get through all of this, but we're going to do it, y'all. We're, we're going to do, do it. it. The main event for tonight's episode, though is covering some nostalgia with old Nickelodeon. Yes. Uh, so we're excited about that. That's Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. And uh, that's going to be our draft for tonight as well. We're going to be drafting some Nickelodeon characters. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and we'll go over this, I guess, as we get closer to it. But since it's just the, the two of us, we're going to get a little bit of help from our live chat here on Twitch. Uh, to draft for Mario and Lee this week. Um, and if you haven't, if you're listening to this on the audio version, make sure you go check out our Twitch page. It's twitch.tv slash freaking nerds media, where we record this live every Tuesday night at 830 Eastern. Um, so come hang out with us live as we record this craziness. We've got a ton of other live shows each week. Each and every week, we've got all kinds of games that we play, D and D, crafting cocktails. Uh, so it's definitely fun uh, to come hang out with us over on Twitch. Welcome back. To I'm the back. Table. Sorry, the cat needs to go out. Mike. Yes. I have bad news for you. What's the bad news? Walmart, Target have made decisions. Decisions yes. that affect you. Yes. So, uh, Walmart, Target, and the Pokemon trading card game. Y'all, listen to this craziness, okay? Do you remember going in to Targets and Walmarts and immediately just running over to that aisle next to the cash register and looking for your favorite Pokemon cards? I do not. Or sports trading cards in general. Also, I do not do that either. I go straight to the shoes. Straight to the shoes. But I, I can, I can try to like empathize. You try to pretend. You try sure. to pretend that you go over to the Pokemon cards. Y'all, they're not there anymore in Target. They're, they're gone. gone. They're gone. They're gone because Be nerds have gone wild. Nerds have gone wild. Like it's some crazy. Nerds gone wild. Some crazy. Stuff going on in the Pokemon card world. But again, it's not just Pokemon cards. That's what we're going to kind of focus on because that's what we collect. Uh, it's also uh, Major League Baseball, NBA, and NFL cards. They have completely banned them from store shelves. They've taken them off the shelves for right now. And the reason is the craze of collecting these cards have is just exploded again. Right. Do, you, do you at least remember in the in the late '90s how crazy the Pokemon card no well, collecting was? No, I mean my brother collected, but this is not something that we went and like ran stuff down. I don't remember it being like that in the '90s. I remember hunting them. I definitely don't remember. I guess because like what happened I here. Drive. So, uh, a little bit of background: the the trading card 
world has exploded since the pandemic has started again. Uh, I guess everybody got bored. I don't know. Uh, they they wanted some nostalgia and started collecting yes, some Pokemon sorry. cards the again. The world was sad. But and the, we millennials wanted happiness yes, again. Yes, all we want is happiness, okay? We say, give us back our cards. And give the, us our Pokemon. The value on these cards exploded. And which was awesome for those that had some cards. But scalpers were like, yep. yo, I'm getting in on this. I got laid off on my job because of, the, because of the pandemic. And I can just go to Target and make some money. So scalpers started buying up all kinds of cards and reselling them online. Um, Real cute. It got so bad that stores started to limit purchases. You could only get like two of uh, Pokemon cards, two packs or whatever. Um, but what that only did is it pretty much just led to angry customers. Uh, it, Not angry customers. Angry, stupid people. Angry, stupid people. Like, I just went into GameStop the other day and picked up two packs of of cards because there's a two pack limit yep. and you didn't see me acting a fool up in there. I mm -hmm. said, thank you very much, sir. I took my Galarian and left. Well, and we're collectors. Like we are, we are like the, 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 what you would think of as a standard collector. Every time I go into these stores, I check those cards, see if they're there. Uh, I collect cards. I sell some cards, all that good stuff. But anyway, the limit, because of the scalpers getting so irritated about this, the limit led to just angry lines. Uh, employees were getting threatened when they didn't let people buy more than whatever the limit was. And some customers started to get physical. That is Let's ridiculous. Let's get physical. Uh, with other customers and even employees. That's ridiculous, y'all. Over all. trading cards. This is ridiculous. You need to calm your tots. We're not in here fighting Team Rocket, guys. This is the poor little Target boy in his red polo. Y'all have got to chill out their cards, for God's yeah. sake. We're all going to get them back, okay? The world is going to go back to normal. Don't attack the boy in the red polo. So, specifically last week, a 35-year-old gentleman got assaulted that by four people. Four people jumped this man over NBA cards. Was it NBA? I can't remember. It was sports cards was in general. Cards. One person got jumped by four people because he had cards that they wanted. Uh, luckily for the man, he had a concealed carry permit. Uh, and was this, was this Texas? Yeah, it was, had to have been. I think it was like Michigan or something. It was. They're like, "Welcome to God's country. Yeah. Come take these cars." The guy is definitely from the south. Uh, if he had a gun on him, but uh, he, he was able to defend himself. He didn't shoot anybody, but he was able to pull it out and they ran away. All that good stuff. But like, yo, he got jumped in the parking lot. Like, how insane is that? This is ridiculous. So because a few stupid people. This is, what, this is what happened. This is like Mama Walmart and Mama Target yep. saw the kids fighting out in the backyard. And it was like one kid acting a fool out there, jumping in the mud, being stupid. And now all the rest of us get punished because you're a moron. Exactly. So, Target released this update. They have pulled cards from the shelves in uh, stores, period. All stores, starting last Friday... You will not be able to find them in stores physically. You can only get them online. Uh, this is Are temporary. they going to bring them back? Yeah, that's... So you're look about at to that. Say. We were like on the same page. This is temporary. It's with you there, baby. This is temporary. However, it's it's only temporary. I mean, it, it's it, they basically said until like stuff calms down. Like, that's not happening anytime soon. It is still impossible to find why, these cards. Why do we still not have any cards? Uh, it's a mix of like, a Like, I understand ton of different that things. COVID has, like, jacked up a lot of stuff. I can't get peak gravel, guys, from my backyard. Right, right. You don't see me jumping anybody at the rock, Corey. It's a mix of a ton of different things, though. Everybody wanted to start collecting them again. At the same time, COVID impacted supply. And right. so, it was just a perfect, perfect storm of bad stuff. And so it's impossible to find uh, trade. I mean, you can find like Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh cards still, but Pokemon and most sports cards mm. are just like, 
impossible to find. It's insane. They are sick of catching the COVID. They want to ca- they want to catch them all. Catch all. They the want to catch them all. That's right. They said no, thank you, COVID. Have, I, don't, I don't catch Pokemon. So have you ever been in chat? This is for you to answer too here at the live audience. Have you guys ever been so crazed to get something in the store that you got to the level of either getting into a verbal argument? Uh, you know, or getting fi- even physical with people mm. in the store. Because, like, I just don't understand how people can get so insane with this so, stuff. So, I do remember that we got, like, batshit wild over um, Furbies mm. in the 90s. Like, like mamas were taking out mamas to get, to get that Furby. Now, more recently, um, I did risk my son's life to reach the last bag of chocolate donuts at Walmart because there's somebody coming for it. And I was like, Micah, get your ass up there. Like, <laughs> mom needs those donuts right now. Oh, um, man. I, I, I would I would punch somebody for the last bag of chocolate donuts at the grocery store. Yeah. But back in the day, it was the Furbies, man. It was the Furbies. It oh, the yeah. Furbies. Somebody in chat, uh, Stefan chat said, Tickle Me Elmo. Remember that oh, Christmas? Yeah. The cr- and um, Shoot, what's that jingle all the way? Turbo, Turbo Man. Man. Turbo Man. <laughs> yes. It's Turbo Time. Oh, my gosh. I love that movie so much. Um, but, yeah, it just it blows my mind how, like, intense people can get about this stuff. Um, it, it's crazy. I, I Anybody that's been on the, the receiving side of that by somebody else, <laughs> we had that. Uh, we had a similar situation, I guess, when we were buying Christmas lights this past year <laughs> with the inflatable. Oh my gosh! I mean, that's a long story, Y'all, but like it's it, a story it's, for a different day. But yeah, like, legit, we were like, we we're scared for our lives. Remind leaving us, with this inflatable. Remind us at some point to we'll share that story. Share at Christmas. the Christmas inflatable story uh, with you guys. Uh, the Beanie Baby craze, yo. Oh, I yeah. went from going crazy collecting Beanie Babies uh, in the late '90s with my mom to going straight into going nuts about Pokemon cards. Like I went to, I went from one craze to the next. It's, it was um, crazy. That's a weird jump. It was crazy. Uh, but you, you know what else is <laughs> you crazy? Went for Beanie Babies to Pokemon. Yo, there's nothing wrong with that, y'all. It's just funny. I love Beanie Babies. He was chasing that Princess Di special like, edition bear. I was like 12 at the time. It's nothing wrong with like collecting. No, that's pretty bad, that's, I guess. That's, that's old, honey, to collect. Bears. Yeah, I'm just now know. realizing just that that's that's a me. little weird. But I'm glad that I shifted over into Pokemon. You know that that's a little bit better. Uh, but you know what else is crazy? What, what I'm is transitioning. Crazy? This look at this transition, look at y'all. That. Look at that. We are transitioning over to Marvel and how well they did oh, at the MTV mo- uh, Movie Awards. Everybody, hop on. This is the Marvel train time. Yes. We got a little bit of Marvel to cover tonight. Yes. First of all, yes, the MTV. <sighs> Uh, movie is this the 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 movie TV and, and TV film awards? awards? Okay, there we go. Yep. So Marvel freaking dominated at the awards, which is super cool. I think they had to skip the awards last year because of COVID. So, or maybe they just didn't like the meat live. So, anyways, WandaVision killed it. They got the most. So, like, super fast. Go run through these best show. WandaVision, obviously. Best performance, Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda. We have best villain, absolutely, Catherine Hahn. Though Zemo was really good too, but... Oh, Zemo! No match for Catherine Hahn. I wonder if he was nominated. And Catherine Hahn looked so good last night too. She looked... Or, not last night. At the awards. Looked gorgeous. Okay, best fight, WandaVision, for the fight between um, Catherine Hahn and Elizabeth Olsen. Yep. Oh man, so good. Um, so those were the you Wanda Vision wins, name for a second, wins didn't you? and um, yes, I did. Agatha. <laughs> Agatha. All, it was it was Agatha all along. I could feel it. Uh, and then we have uh, best hero here. At least we got off Wanda Vision on Dear People. We have Anthony Mackie yeah. as playing Falcon as our best hero, and then the best duo we have Sam and Bucky. I know, I love that. Obviously, now not exactly like Marvel stuff, but they're part of the Marvel family. Scarlett uh, Johansson received an award for her contributions to the film industry. I think it was like a decade award or whatever. So that was awesome. That's Mike's um, future oh, wife, yes. uh, my children's future stepmother. Yeah, as you would say. And then, um, of course, Ch- Chadwick Boseman. Um, he received a posthumous award for his role in his final film before he died. So mm-hmm. not a Marvel film, but 
Um, that was really cool too. So congratulations, Marvel. Yeah, a lot of a lot of huge news. Go there. you. They they completely sweeped. Swept. Sweep. Swept. Swept, mm-hmm. Swept is the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it would be. Uh, I saw sweeps in the graphic, I guess. Uh, they completely swept these awards. Uh, they won the most like, out of all the different like, No surprise groupings. there. No, no surprise. surprise. They definitely deserved it. Uh, it. These shows have been... WandaVision was fantastic. It's absolutely my favorite yeah. show I've seen in a long time. These shows was, have been fantabulous. So that fantabulous. was awesome. Now, moving on to more Marvel news. I am really conflicted... Okay, about sharing this. Um, Lee specifically asked that I cover this. But I want to preface this by saying this is not confirmed news. This has not been confirmed by Marvel. This is a leak. But I'm going to share it. And then we're just going to see if it comes true or not. I am not the source on this. The source specifically is Mikey Sutton with Geekosity. So if somebody gets in trouble... Let it be yes, him. basically what Britt is saying is if this is wrong, don't beat us don't up. Don't blame me. Mm-mm. Beat up Mike, Mikey Sutton. No, I'm just saying Go what a friend him. of a friend of my cousin's sister's brother said. Okay? <laughs> All right? So, of course, recently Marvel confirmed the title, Black Panther 2, which is Wakanda Forever. Wakanda which is awesome. Forever. Love it. Um, which will be coming out July of twenty. 22, mm-hmm. right? So next year. Okay, so everybody's been wondering who, who's our villain going to be? Right. Who's it going to be? Okay, well, here's the rumor. It's supposed to be um, like really solid sources. Okay? We'll see. The villain that is supposed to be our main villain in Black Panther 2 is going to be Namor McKenzie, also known as Submariner. The Submariner. Mike keeps calling him Submariner. Yo, y'all, look at the, the way that is spelled. How are you not saying Submariner? Submariner. Why would you ever... What's the, ba- what's the baseball team? The Mariners. Mariners. 100%, but they're not They're not underwater like a submarine. Su- Guys, who's right? Me or Mike? <laughs> Is it's it Submariner. Submariner or Submariner? It's that. It sounds like Wiener. It does a little Who bit. Who would name? It does a superhero after something that rhymes with Wiener. That's true. Okay, we could it's just call him Submariner. Okay, if you do, if you're like Mike and you do not know who Sub Brit Ma Wiener is, Brit is right. Okay, uh, all right. This is a character that was created uh, by Bill Everett <clears throat> way back in the day, back in 1939, and in like the golden age of. Marvel Comics, he was like one of the top three most popular. Mariner Wiener. Yep. That's what they call him back in the day. (laughs) Yeah. So he's not, he's like Mike's, he's like your kind of person too. He's not a hero. He's not a villain. I love those characters that are that. Somewhere in the the, the gray area kind of guy. He's really just like on the side of Atlantis. Of Atlantis, right. 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 So whatever is good for Atlantis is good for him. It's kind of like, who Thor would have been if he didn't fall in love in five minutes on Earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're talking about how he was like that for... He, he should have been, like, loyal to Asgard. But instead, he, like, met a girl and was, like, five minutes. It was like, it was like the freaking Bachelor. It was I'm like, going calm to down, protect sir. Earth. Sir, you just met her. You are not in love with her. Okay, anyways. On, on That's a, on another her. topic for another day. Other day. Yep. Uh, but the really cool thing is we've already kind of gotten a couple of Easter eggs in past MCU films of Submariner. I mean, it's not I like know. outright, but here we go, right? So all the way back in Iron Man 2, uh, Tony Stark is talking to Nick Fury about the Avengers Initiative, and right there in the back, you see that? You see that, boys and girls? Mm-hmm. There's a map. There's a map that's monitoring like mysterious events, and we see a couple spots marked on that map. Now, one of them we already know. That's Wakanda. Wakanda. That's Wakanda. And the one that's right there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I don't know. Could that be Mariner Wiener? Could that be him (laughs) in Atlantis? Uh, I don't know, but it sure sounds like 
something plausible to me. And then let's just jump forward a little bit to Avengers Endgame. All is going badly. Uh, everyone is sad, right? And the uh, the remaining Avengers, they're coming back. They got to talk to Natasha. They're having like a council meeting. They're you like, know? let me tell you what's going on. Do you remember this? Oh, I totally remember okay. this. So, no, here's the one that I always butcher their name. Yeah. I, so there's an, the Ocoee River in Tennessee, Ocoee. and I always want to call her Ocoee, but it's Okoye, right? Okoye, yes, okay. you said it right. right. I was trying so, to remember, too. Natasha uh, Romanoff questions Okoye, not Okoye, about a series of tremors that are detected under the ocean and how they're handling it. And she was like, we got it. Like, you handle it by not handling it, and that's pretty much it. But also, again, could it be Submariner Wiener? I think it could be. I think it could be. By the way, the, the live chat has agreed with you. It is definitely Submariner not submariner. Submariner um, wiener. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna struggle. I'm telling you guys. I'm gonna struggle saying submariner. I'm gonna call you wiener every uh, time. Hundred uh, percent. The uh, another thing that happened in Endgame too that some people are saying could it be just like a little hint at, at uh, Prince Namor. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with that. Um, is that uh, I think Chris Evans or Cap says right before this scene or right after I can't remember. Oh, this is um, okay. I know. I know where you're going. That he saw. Uh, some type of whale in the Hudson river for like the first time in forever. And so like, could this be, you know, you know uh, just some hints that some like, you know, I guess water... I was, when I first watched the movie, I was assuming they were saying like, because there's not yeah. a bunch of people polluting earth and I stuff think that's, that wildlife is still in. I feel there. like that's the most reach out of what we just brought up for sure. It's definitely the biggest but reach, but something to bring up. Submariner does have like the ability to telepathically control uh, like, like water aquatic creatures. Aquatic animals. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> water creatures. There are better words for that. Aquatic. Okay. But here's the thing. If you are real excited, Mike, about seeing Submariner Wiener, you may get to see him faster. What? Than July then, 2022. Earlier than Wakanda forever. Maybe so. Oh, interesting. Because... There was an Instagram photo. I think it was from Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek. Okay. And she posted this picture, right, of the 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 youth, the eternal youth. So this is, I believe, on the set of the Eternals. And that fella over there with like the like dark Bieber thing going on, the Bieber swoosh that's happening. He that young actor is has been rumored to play a young uh, Namor. So what we could be seeing is that in the Eternals, which is going to span like a really large gap of time, uh, we could get to meet um, young Namor. Maybe we get a little backstory on him and they possibly canonize yeah. Atlantis within the MCU in that film. And then he will go on to show up the next year in um, Wakanda Forever as our main villain. So yes. That would be super cool. They're, they're stair-stepping us into this character because he's not as, like, you know, prevalent in comics. He's not like, when you think of Marvel, you think Spider-Man, you think Captain no, America. No, he is, Mike. He is, like, in the top three. Like, in the Golden Age, it was, like, uh, the three most popular were Cap, uh, Hulk, and Submariner. Currently, though, I'm saying. Currently, in, like, if you go and ask somebody... If you just go grab somebody in Walmart and say, hey, name a Marvel character, I can guarantee you that none of them are going to name Submariner. Well, from now on, if that happens, I'm going to say Submariner Wiener. Yeah, but I will say I am pretty excited about this. Like, I love the whole concept of all these new um, you know, characters being brought into the MCU. I am so so I'm, I'm stoked for this. Here Eternals for Eternals is going to be insane. It's going to be so Eternals good. Eternals looks really freaking good. And if we get any backstory, he actually kind of has like a cool... Like yeah, origin story, like where he came from and his parents and all that. Well, stuff. and he kind of like, has that'd a, be cool. He kind of has a he has like a cool alignment too, where you know if we're talking like D and D alignments, up to your fave, um, right? You know, he's got that kind of like neutral, he's, where he's he's like sometimes chaotic neutral. Yeah, he's sometimes hanging out with the good guys and sometimes hanging out with the bad guys, just whatever suits him, you know. Uh, but real quick, uh, just just a poll for you, babe, and and the chat too, I guess. Who do you think should play Prince Namor? The Submariner. Oh, I'm so bad at that. I can't... I don't know. Uncle Jesse? I, uh, 
<laughs> John <laughs> Stamos? You can put John Stamos in anything. I'm John okay Stamos in the MCU. I would be okay. Okay. All right. Um, I know a lot of people are like, you know, he's... Uh, uh, chat says The Rock. The Rock. That would be rock. killer. I know a lot of people, too, they're they're comparing him to Aquaman of DC. And so everybody's right, like, Jason right. Momoa. But like... Yeah. He can't play Aquaman and yeah. Prince Prince no. Namor both at the same time. Like that's pretty much the same character. The Rock is kind of hard too because he is just now starting out with DC as the Black Adam and I feel like it's going to be really hard for him to play both roles in both universes at the same time. I don't see Do you have that, that Submariner yeah, graphic bring it still? Back up. Yep. I feel like The Rock is too like he's too broad. Like, his upper body's too broad. Like, I guess I was seeing somebody, like, not as built. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't know. But I love The Rock. Yeah, I don't know. I can kind of see. It's I don't know. He kind of trying to think of somebody that could fit that. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Christian Slater. Let's go with Christian Slater. He's got a big forehead. Uh, just like, you know, just Prince, like Prince Namor <laughs> here in the, in the art that we're showing on, on Twitch. All right. Okay. I'm down. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, chaotic, neutral. Oh, mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. there's a new game, a new Dungeons and Dragons game coming to, uh, a console near you. There is, uh, there is a game coming out called Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. Now, this game I'm stoked oh, oh, oh. for. I have it pre-ordered. I'm ready to jam this game, mostly because we've been playing D&D on this channel as well with all of our friends and stuff. And so, like, I'm just all into D&D right now. So when I saw this, I was like, I'm in. Yeah, like, you got me. I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it for the PlayStation 5. I'm ready to go. Uh, and then news broke this week that it's going to be part of the Xbox Game Pass. Um, and for those that aren't, like 100% sure what that means is if you already subscribe to the Xbox Game Pass, this is a brand new game that's going to launch for free if you already subscribe to Game Pass on the Xbox. So this How much is, is Game Pass? huge. It's uh, 15 a month. Did and we you pay get, for that? Uh, Micah has it, I believe, because uh, it comes with Xbox uh, Gold. Uh, which you need for uh, playing online. But basically, you pay 15 bucks a month, you get a butt ton of other games to play, and they're just adding this into the rotation as part of the Game Pass as soon as it launches. That is that is so nice. For free. It's like it's like getting going and getting a sample for free at the at mm. the ice cream place and then they're like, "No, just have the whole damn waffle cone. You can have three scoops." I am very hungry. For free. I am very hungry. Me um too. couple quick notes about this game. This is the third game in the trilogy of of Dark Alliance. They had um they had uh, Baldur. I'm sorry, the third in the trilogy of Baldur's Gate, which is interesting because we're playing that setting in our D and D campaign. Sounds familiar. However, this game is taking place in Icewind Dale, oh, which wait. was the uh, the setting that we started we playing started a in few, Icewind Dale. few months ago. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. This is the third in the trilogy. Uh, you've got several characters. Uh, I'm not super into Icewind Dale though, because I'm just not into like the the cold. Like icy environment. Yeah. Uh, you get to choose to play, for those that are watching us live, you can see the screenshot I have up. You get to choose to play one of the four main characters I of the game. I would definitely choose that juicy fellow in the front. The juicy uh, dwarf there? Yeah. Yeah. So I like him. A shorty's got to stick together. I, I know that these are actually like iconic D&D characters. Um, I, however, don't remember their names uh, because I'm pretty new to like the, the overall story and stuff of D&D. But uh, I think I think his name is actually Donald. Donald. Mm-hmm. Donald the Dwarf. Yeah. I like it. So you play as Donald the Dwarf. Old, um, old Donnie Boy. They they call him Old Donnie Boy. Old Donnie Boy. It's gonna be pretty cool though. So definitely go keep an eye out for that. It's coming out um, June twenty second. June twenty second. That's next month. Oh, wow. I thought it was a couple months away. Look at that. Wow. Well, All right. So well, look at that. June, so get June your 22nd. Thing. If you have... Uh, get your Game Pass on. If you have Game Pass, it's automatically yours, like, right out the gate. Can you, like, play with friends and stuff? Uh, no, I think this is a single player. Why this did is, you have to ask me that? This is a solo. No, multiplayer. Solo it is multiplayer. Okay. So All right. They there probably have couch co- co-op, and you're able to probably log in 
to uh, online co-op. Well. All right. So, okay. There yeah, you go. Pretty intense stuff there. All righty. Now, moving on to something that we actually talked about in chat in uh, the live show last week, or maybe it was a different show, um, with Tyler of Dabbling Dad's podcast. Uh, we talked a little bit about this Nickelodeon documentary um, that came out. It is called The Orange Years. Um, Lee was super into this. She watched it, read up a whole lot on it, and she's not here, so I'm going to try to fill in for her. Okay? This is on Hulu. Um, this is on Hulu. Uh, it's not a series. It's just like one-off uh, documentary. We watched it last night, and I actually really enjoyed it. Did you like it? Oh, Oven Ready just watched this last night. Oh, Yo, what's up, Oven Ready? How Oven are you? Ready, we were actually just talking about you the other I day. I know, man. Actually, right here in our kitchen, we were talking about Oven Ready. That was weird. Because the oven... Was ready. Was ready. Ready for pizza. I don't know. I just Um, was going with that. But we were talking about you. Anyways, so we watched this last night. I really enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? I I feel like you did. I I thought it was great. I mean, it's so cool to like look back at our childhood and and what we enjoyed. If you were a 90s kid, Nickelodeon was like... It was like our childhood, you know? Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. I had this. I I actually, I pulled up a video on YouTube of it so I could show Mike last night. Maybe y'all had this, right? So I had this Nickelodeon alarm clock, and it was so freaking sweet. I had it in my room for, like, ever. And it had, like, the little slime, little zigzag thing. But when the alarm went off in the morning, it would be the Nick, 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 Nick thing that would go Mm. off or whatever it was so cool and now i'm like super pissed i don't have any more because it was so cool um so anyways if you've not seen the documentary yet but you if if you if you didn't grow up in the 90s generation i don't know that it'll mean as much to you like as it does to 90s kids because it was just like well it's our childhood um but it is a documentary that focuses on the golden age of Nickelodeon, which was kind of like the mid '80s to the late '90s, so it was a good time. Man. It was so cool. So it was a good time to be a kid. For those that like, I know when Disney Plus first launched, like last year, or year and a half, however long it's been out, they had this uh, the Imagineers so uh, documentary. Good. It was so watch good. That, it was so fun haven't. to watch that and see how they've made like Disney World and stuff like that. This is the same type of approach. It's so cool to like look back at like nostalgia and how they made things and how this company ran, what it's their so values cool. were and stuff. It was it was really cool. It was yeah, really so cool. it really just like dives into the origins of Nickelodeon, which like way back in the day was actually called um, Pinwheel. And so the the executive um, who kind of like built this whole thing, it's cool. It was a woman, right? Yeah. So Miss Geraldine, Geraldine. That's like Geraldine. Very Southern sounding. Uh, Geraldine Layborn, she kind of took like this like really niche channel. It didn't have a lot of direction. Um, It was just kind of like one or two shows. And she grew this thing into this massive powerhouse brand that it became. And this just like icon of our childhood. So it it just kind of like goes through each of the shows and explains, you know. Uh, where it came from, you get to meet the writers. You have old cast members that came back. Keenan was on there, and Kel. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was really cool. Keenan and Kel from all that. Oh man, who y'all. loves Snick. orange soda? Y'all. Kel loves orange soda. Oh my gosh, Nita just said in chat, "I still have that alarm clock in my closet. Shut the front door. You need to pull that thing out yes. and put it on your counter. We need to see a picture of every that. day. I loved that alarm clock so much." Uh, loved that. Loved that. that. That's so cool. There's so many, so many cool like Nickelodeon like memories. So, so many of them. I love it. I love it so much. So the the one really cool quote that I remembered from the documentary, yeah, so which I loved, was kids can smell from a thousand miles away when they're being sold a bunch of crap. And so that's really what like Nickelodeon aimed to do from the beginning is they wanted to be um, a network of shows that gave kids like a place that they felt like they belonged and that they were understood. So, of course, if you grew up in the 90s, then you heard it like a million times. Uh, Nickelodeon, it's 
five kids, four kids, mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. So, and there was Nickelodeon Studios down at Universal, and they filmed all the shows there. God, it was so freaking cool, man. Loved so cool. the Nickelodeon days. Mike and I like finished watching it last night around like 1.30, and we were like just like sitting, and we're like, God, the 90s were like the oh, best time to be a such kid. Such a great time to grow up as a child. Like it was before, like you still were outside and doing things outside and there wasn't crazy stuff. And, you know, and and, yeah. and now and it also included, you know, the start of the Internet, sort of. You know, you kind of were the very scratching like, the surface. A- AOL dial dial up. Yo, man, yeah, man. Yeah. But but then you had like these these shows and stuff that your your friends. Well, this really would was like over. the first time that TV, um, like really started to cater to kids. Mm-hmm. So we got really spoiled. Yep, um, that's really good. I don't like I said I don't know too much about what <clears throat> they're currently creating, other than maybe some Nick Junior shows for our. our no, I mean one. I'm sure that they are. It's just that we. Don't watch Nickelodeon right now. Like our all of our kids are at like an age that they don't hit Nickelodeon. Right. I'm sure we'll find out. Soon. But I do know that they are gonna create. I know a lot of a reboot. Ah uh, yes. Of Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yes, y'all. Easily like one of the most memorable game shows from yes. the '90s. Nickelodeon era. I remember watching this all the time. Yes. Um, so they're going to be rebooting it, and it's only going to be for adults this time, which is super cool. Um, so the original show, it it originally aired from like 93 to 99, um, but they're going to bring it back. They're going to reintroduce all of the original elements from the show, um, including the big stone guy, uh, Omec, Olmec or whatever. Yep. Um, he'll be in there. and But the set this time, so I think it was originally filmed maybe in Universal Studios in uh, in in the park, mm-hmm. in Nickelodeon Studios. But they're going to take it out of the set this time and they're actually going to put it in the jungle. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. part of it. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. cool. So, so they're going to move it into the jungle, yeah. Um, everything's because it's for adults now, so the set's going to be bigger. Everything's going to be like scaled up. The prizes are going to be a lot, you know, better, yep. and so the challenges are going to be a lot harder. And fun fact: they are doing open casting right now. So Literally. if you want to get on that show, this is your chance. It's boys open. and girls. Right now, you can go. Lee to, has been trying to hit me up to do this, and I'm like, dude, I will dislocate my knee. Yeah, so you have to you have to sign up as a team, right? Like it's you kind of have to be or like, yep, yeah, teammate too. Uh, so if you if you go to legendscasting.com, you can sign up. We can create a freaking nerds team out there and play on <laughs> legends. We will of totally the support uh, two of you to oh, go on the man. show. My body is not made. Or Legends of the Hidden Temple, it's or really um, anything um, active in general. So this is a I will giant be... form. Oh man, look! One of the questions is: Are you afraid of heights? Absolutely. Yeah, this Absolutely is going to be fun. I am. This is. I, I cannot wait to watch. I feel like this. it's going to be like Wipeout, sort of. Wipeout with like Nickelodeon nostalgia. Yeah. You know. Yep. But yeah, it's now casting. Go to legendscasting.com if you're interested in signing up a team to play. And please let us know. And please, yes, let us know. Because Uh, that would be freaking awesome. (laughs) Freaking Um, awesome. Oh, so chat. um, Steve is saying the one condition is that you have to be in L.A. for the entire month of July. Very costly. You know who could do this? Fodder. Kellen, uh, Kellen, Kellen and, and Fodder, Kellen, and, or Kellen and Brittany. Yeah. Oh, we could do. We could. Oh. Okay. So Slytherwin and Kellen, you guys will be um, going on the show. Yep. We'll be nominating you. We are literally going to um, sign you up. Don't for worry show. about going to that website. We'll do that for you tonight. <laughs> they All are right. going to get a like a message from the oh producers, God. and but they're going to be, be like, so freaking hilarious. I don't think they're in here tonight. So I um, saw Slytherwin earlier. Oh shoot. Uh, well, maybe he's out of here. Nobody tell him. We're going to sign him up. Don't tell him. him. Don't tell him. We're going to sign him up. That would be the most hilarious thing ever. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, that would be perfect because they, they live out there. So, oh, yeah. my God. How that freaking is, funny would that be? That would be so cool. But uh, it's so cool. I mean, it's just like 
there's just a lot of like nostalgia stuff going on, you know, from Pokemon cards to Nickelodeon. I'm a 35 year old. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm a 10 year old in a 35 year old's body. Is yeah. where I was going. Like yeah. I'm, I'm totally down. I hear you. I feel uh, you. For this. Okay, so since. We are just... Is it time? Children and adult bodies. It's time for our draft for the evening. It's time. Um, I can't remember if you said this on the recorded part of I don't the remember podcast, either, but you go but, ahead. And- um, as always, we will be doing our nonsense draft. And tonight, because um, we watched the Orange Years uh, documentary, we will be drafting animated Nickelodeon characters. And since Mario and Lee are out tonight, but we do not want them to not have the chance to win, we have two uh, brave competitors that have stepped into their place tonight. They will be playing from chat, and uh, we will be announcing their uh, their answers. So Stoop will be playing for Mario, Mario. and Steph will be playing for Miss Lee. It may be interesting if we flip that. Would it be interesting if we flip Steph playing for Mario and Stu playing for Lee? You know, I kind of feel like Steph's answers would be better suited to Mario. Yeah. And Stu to Lee. Let's <laughs> switch totally, that. We're okay. totally doing that. Okay, so... Steph, you're yes. playing for Mario and Stu, you'll be playing for Lee. Um, so, as always, we roll for initiative to find out our order... Um, and we are going to roll for you guys as well. So let's roll ours first. And we have, oh, that is bad. That is a four. That was yours. <laughs> okay, so Britt has a four. I have a 17. Uh, Mike is a 17 and Britt is a four. Okay, I will roll for Steph. You will roll for Stoop. Oh, he doesn't want oh, me to roll for Oh, that's right. You roll for he Steph. He doesn't trust okay. me. All right. All right, I'm going for Steph. Uh, Steph, you got a nine. And I have a six here. So, should have gone with Mike. You should have gone okay, with me, so Stoop. Six, nine. Okay, so here is our order for the evening. We have Mikey Boy, you are first. Yo, this headband, y'all, I'm telling you, this rally cap, for those out here that are watching on Twitch, they're seeing this headband, this rally cap I'm wearing. I have three nonsense drafts in a row. Three column right now. I barely won oh, in goodness. this last in this last draft. I barely won. 37.2% of votes, and Lee was right behind me with 32% of votes. But yo, I am wearing this rally cap. I've got the first pick again. First pick again. Okay. And so, hold I'm on. ready to roll. I'm ready hold to roll, there, y'all. Big fella. Woo! Just just hang on. Okay, as always, we will have four picks. One, two, three, four. And then Mike will later um, put the graphic up with our teams on Twitter. Please go to Twitter and cast your vote for the team that you think is best. Um, I think something is broken because you guys all accidentally keep clicking Mike's name on that. So um, just to make sure that it's not broken, if you'll just try clicking somebody else's name this week, uh, that would help us just... Double check and make sure that everything's working on Twitter's end. Uh, with oh, that man. said, let's start this draft. Mike, you're up first with our first pick of the draft. Okay, so like everybody knows the character that is should be picked first. Do they? Um, oh, 100%. It's, it's the face of Nickelodeon. Um, also, the reason that Nickelodeon toppled out of the golden ages but interesting carry on consumerism i i think i've got to just play it safe with the first pick because i've got so many picks between mine my two you know my my next pick so i i'm just gonna go ahead and snag spongebob square pants all right old Um, spongebob number one pick i think that's safe i'm not a humongous fan of spongebob but, um, his voice kind of irritates me, but I do yeah. like that song he plays on the ukulele. All right, so Steph, you are up next with together. the pick. Steph is picking for Mario. So Steph, what will be your first pick? What say you? This is going to be interesting. There's Donna a lot of... Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about the Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles? Oh my gosh, why did that not even cross my mind? Oh, oh, I have failed this draft. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I didn't think about Ninja Turtles. Oh, my gosh. That's a really, really good oh, pick. And well, Mike's going to cry now. I mean, there are four of them. <laughs> so. Okay, Stoop, you are up next. You are on your first pick for Lee. 
She oh, said, you man. are welcome, Mario. Okay. Yeah, that was... Waiting for Stoops. That was my pick. Oh, oh Stoops got his pick when stolen. That happens. Okay. All right. Michelangelo. Oh, no, no. no, stop. Oh, ouch. oh gosh. My it's going to be a Ninja Turtle draft. Angelo. Dang, man. Those All are right. my two favorites. So we got the two turtles. Okay. Well, I will be going in a different direction. Um, just a reminder if you're new to the draft. This is a snake draft, which means that we'll go backwards and I'll yes. have two picks in a row. So, okay, I am going to, I'm going to use this snake draft. Get off, I swear to God, you look at my sheet one more time, I'll stab you in the eyes. <laughs> oh! Come on over here again, see what I'm happens, good. big I'm fella. I'm good, I got my headband, yeah, I got my headband. Yeah, okay, I am going to use my picks. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got two in a row. You got two in a row. There's one that I really, really, really want, but I think that it will drop to a later round. Okay. Um, okay. I've got, I've got a few. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Chucky. Oh, Chucky, Chucky Finster from Rugrats. from Rugrats. Okay. That's a good, that's a good pick. Um, that's good. Love him. He's funny. I, I dig him. Ugh. Um and so many then good picks. For, I shouldn't have picked SpongeBob. For <laughs> for my next pick. Uh I'm gonna go with an adventurous gal. Oh. Uh she loves her backpack, she loves maps, and she loves monkeys. I'm going with Dora. Dora, Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer just got picked. Dora, on our Dora, Dora draft. the Explorer. Dora. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Um, yes, the Ninja Turtles are absolutely Nickelodeon. Yeah, they they did not start. They did not start as Nickelodeon property, but their newest, I think the newest one too. The two newest animated shows with Ninja Turtles are owned by Nickelodeon. Yeah. Okay, um, Stoop Lee. You like Stanley, but it's Stoop Lee. <laughs> Stoop Lee. <laughs> Stoop Lee. You are up now. Okay, we've already got his pick. It's going to be Danny, Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom. Okay, okay. That's, that's a good one. That's solid. That's solid. Danny Phantom. Micah would like that pick. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got Steph Mario. Steph for Mario. What will it be? Is she going to pick another Ninja Turtle? Oh, man. We're going crazy, doing something different? Thinking they meant the orange ears. Yeah, I told uh, them before we started recording um, that we could do you could do any animated Nickelodeon characters. So um, yep. past or present, Tommy. Oh, Pickles. Tommy Pickles. That's a good one. Very uh, solid spot. There. I love his brother's name better though because it's just funny. Dill. Dill, Dill. Pickles. Dill Pickle. Little it's Dill. Cute. Yep. Old Dill. Tommy has a really ugly head. My brother had a lumpy head like that when he was a baby. Um. Um, Mike, Mikey boy, sweaty Man. Mike, you're up. Sweaty Mike is up. Uh, I'm going to do a real quick turnarounds because these two cartoons I, were like probably my favorites on Nickelodeon outside of, uh, like Rugrats. So as I grew up, I enjoyed these cartoons. So, so, uh, like favorite, favorite cartoons on Nickelodeon. I'm going Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. Yep. Oh, I'm not wearing my socks. I was about to say you have Rocco's Modern Life socks. I have Life Rocco's socks. Modern Life socks. You also have like Hey Arnold oh, socks. That's my next pick, Mike. actually. Okay, so Arnold. So I'm Arnold going hey Arnold. Rocco's Modern Life and then Arnold from Hey Arnold. Those are good ones. Going to be my Mike my has a really impressive sock collection. We'll have to I have show several. <laughs> my apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> Uh, My socks are a big deal. Steph, Steph Mario, you are Steph Mario. You what are you back got? up. What is your third pick going to be? Currently, she's got Donatello and Tommy Pickles. I can't believe I dropped the ball with Ninja Turtles. Boots, boots. Oh, look at us, like a like just a pair. We've got Tommy and Chucky and Dora and Boots. Mm. Isn't that cute? Ain't that cute? All right, Stupley, you're up. Man, I I'm scrambling here with my next with my last pick of the draft. Oh I, no, I'm not. I I'm really struggling. Oh, I know exactly who my pick is. I know who one is because I'll have both my picks here together, but I don't know who I want for my last. We've got to we've got to see if it makes it back to me, chat. But this is going to be 
Pooh from Kung Fu Panda. Is that Nickelodeon or is that a Universal property? I don't know if that's Nickelodeon. I think Kung Fu Panda is... I think that's a Universal property. Kung Fu Panda. Are you Googling it? I'm Googling. We're Googling. We're Googling. Um, uh, we could probably ask my kids. I hear one of them coming down. It, it is like it's showing on Nickelodeon soon. But is it considered Nickelodeon? Chat. We're going to. Okay. Steph is saying. Okay. Yep. yep it is. Yep, okay. Right, All right. right. We will accept Jack Black into this draft. <laughs> right? That Jack was, Black. Okay. Was he? That was. That's who Pooh so is, is it right? Poe? Yeah. From Kung Fu Panda, is, that, is it... Poe or Poe? Poe? Poo? I'm going with Poe. Poe, it's Poe. Poo. How do you say that panda's name in Kung Fu Panda? Is it Poe? Kung, Kung Fu? Kung Fu. I think it's Poe. We're going with Poe. I think it's Kung Fu. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Kung Fu. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right, Britt, you are now on the clock with All your right. last two picks. So we're going to end it, end around here for Britt, and then we're going to come back around. Y'all, my hands are sweating. I'm nervous. Your palms are sweaty. I, I have lost... m, &M. I've lost many, many rounds so far of this. I I feel like I could really screw this up or this could be my win here. So it's currently I have Chucky Fenster mm -hmm. and I have Dora the Explorer. Mm -hmm. Those are solid, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am I, I want I want to branch out. I want some diversity on my team here. Um so I I think usually I go for the villains. So mm -hmm. I was really considering like Plankton, um, Squidward, even. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm so tense right now. <laughs> I, there's there's one guy I hope makes I it back. Um, I'm gonna take Doug. Oh gosh! I'm oh, gonna take. I'm gonna that take was Doug. it. I was sitting here looking at the list, and I'm like, I don't know who I'm gonna pick. And then I saw Doug's face, and I'm like, done. That is it. I I had to have Doug. Um, oh. Okay, Doug now. just got picked. Doug. Here's my very last pick. Um, this is one of my picks that I wanted really bad. But I, I was like, I bet you I can take this as my last pick and nobody will think about it. Uh, my fourth, my final pick is Face. Face? face. The host, the of, host Nick of, Nick, of Nick Jr. Face. Face, wow. face was a badass. I loved Face. Face. Um, so face is going to be my final pick of this draft. Okay. okay wow. So Dropping Lee, the mic with face. Up with your final pick of the evening. Who is it going to be? My childhood dog was named Skeeter is what Brooke is saying in chat. Yes. Yeah. I loved Skeeter too. I like, I probably liked Skeeter more than Doug, but I, uh, I'm here to win this week. So I had to pick Doug. Had to go. To, that was such a solid pick. Like, especially in the fourth round. Fourth round Doug pick. That is probably the steal of the draft right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey there. Face here. Oh, I love face. Okay, so. Kel from Keenan and Kel. Unfortunately, not an animated. Not, uh, not animated. an animated pick. So, um, try one, one more one time. One more time, Stu. One more time there. <laughs> Sorry, we are going to need an animated character. Mm -hmm. We did say mm -hmm. animated. Mm -hmm. But I do love orange soda. Who loves orange soda? Kel loves orange soda. I do, do I, I do, do, I do. do. Ooh. Oh my gosh. So many freaking memories of Snick. Love Snick, man. So good. Then it better be... Gryffindor. Tw Twister from Rocket Power? Twister from Rocket Power. I don't know who that is. I'm not going to lie I don't you. know who Rocket Power, what Rocket Power is. Twister from Rocket Power. Okay. Twister oh, it is. Oh, Brooke. Brooke, Brooke knows, knows what Rocket Power. Okay. All well, right. that's that's a good pick. So they're talking about it in chat. Other people are recognizing uh, Rocket Power. Mm -hmm. Twister. Mm -hmm. I guess that was the show. Oh, Steph is already in with her Ren. last pick. Ren from Ren and Stimpy. That's a really fantastic pick. That what? is a really fantastic pick. A good um, pick. 
Y'all Chat are... is absolutely shocked that we don't know what rocket power is. Yeah. I am also shocked because you guys seem so shocked. I watched I... a lot of Nickelodeon. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Oh, it says Yeehaw in it. Oh no, maybe a putter's just saying Yeehaw. What's up, putter in the chat? Um. Oh man. So evidently we missed out on rocket power. We need to go back and maybe watch that. Okay. Okay. So Mike, I have the last sweaty pick. Mike with the last pick. Of episode seven draft. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna. What's it gonna be? I think I'm going to like. Listen, I would totally go Ninja Turtle here. Okay, I want to go Leo because I don't like, like I like Raph. He's fine, but he's my least favorite of the four. I'm about to get, you know, hate mail. But uh, what? No, I don't think two, anybody likes Raph. Oh, John McHugh loves so Raph. Cranky. My two favorite turtles have been taken, and so I don't, I don't want to muddy the water too much by taking another one if. I don't really want Leo. I love Leo. That's fine. Um, I'm going to go with Blue. From, oh, my gosh. What a good pick. From Blue's Clues. Dang it, Mike. Going with Blue. I've got the face of the older generation that watched Nickelodeon and SpongeBob. Yeah. And I feel like I have the face of the younger generation. You, you also have that the face of um, the evil corporate uh, consumerism monster that took down the Golden Age. That's uh, very true. Nickelodeon. Just That's remember that true. when you're casting your vote, people. Yep. So there's still several people that I would have I would have drafted, but I feel like I'm gonna just go with blue. Yeah, Blue we had uh, we had a lot of good options out there. Um, chat, let us know who didn't get picked that should have gotten picked. Uniqua from the backyard again. Oh my Yo. gosh, I love the backyard again. Love backyard again. Might get watched the backyard again. A couple of honorable mentions from Stoops list. Uh, Gur from Invader Zim. I did not watch Invader Zim. Also didn't know that one. These uh, must have Gerald. come on like right after we're older than y'all. Mm -hmm. We're old. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun draft. I I, I was actually worried that yeah. I wasn't going to like Skeeter. like my team at the end of this, but I, I actually, I love my yeah, team. Yeah, I really, you know who didn't get picked that was on my list? Phil and Lil. From Rugrats. Yeah, and also Reptar was on my list. Reptar? I was looking at Reptar, y'all. I was looking at Reptar. Uh, oh, and Patrick. There's a ton of Gerald uh, and Skeeter in, in the chat. Dang, maybe I should have gone with Skeeter. I have Arnold. Maybe I should have paired Arnold with Gerald. All right, y'all. That was that was super fun. All right, Make so sure you go check out our Twitter page. Let me recap the teams really yeah. quickly. Yeah. Um, so that you guys can uh, can go vote. Remember that we are not positive that Twitter is working correctly. So in order to help us figure out if Twitter is having technical difficulties, please try to click on a team that is not Mike this week <laughs> um, to let us know if there is, in Ed fact, Bambi. technical Ed issues. Um, up first, we have Mike's team. We've got SpongeBob, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, Arnold from Hey Arnold, and Blue from Blue's Clues. Mm. Wow, they are um, not real... Uh, Creative on on the names. Rocco, <laughs> no, <Rocco's> they're not. <laughs> Arnold, hey Arnold. No. Nope. Blue, blue, blue. Um, all right. And then up next, we have Steph, who is drafting Mario's team this week. We have Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What a pick. Uh, such a pick. I tell you what. Tommy Pickles. So, such a cute little lumpy head. Uh, Boots from Dora the Explorer and Ren from Ren and Stippy. Mm -hmm. Very solid team. Very good. Um, then we have Stoop Lee. Uh, so Stupefy in the chat was playing and drafting for our girl Lee. She has picked, or he has picked, she has picked Michelangelo. Uh, another really solid pick that Mike regrets deeply. Yes. Um, then we have, of course, Danny Phantom. That will be a popular pick. Um, I'm going to say it wrong, but the panda from Kung Fu Panda, Poo or Poe. Or it's Poe. Pa. I, I am not great at pronouncing names. I figured that out. Thank you, chat, for correcting me. Okay. Uh, I've, cor I've said names you wrong You have really jacked some names yeah. tonight. And last but not least, we have Twister from Rocket Power. And for the final team, that would be me again. I keep getting the last pick, but I'm okay with that because I'm rounding out with Chucky Finster from Rugrats, Dora from Dora the Explorer, uh, Doug from 
Doug. And last but not least, Face. face the host. What? The face that you saw between every show on Nick Jr. The lovable, the anamorphous head. What a good pick. Face. That's that's definitely the face of Nick Jr. for sure. And I, I did, I did want to face. correct myself that I did say the steal of the draft was Doug in the fourth round. I, I forgot that it was the this third, the third round. round. Still a steal of the draft, I yeah. feel like, I, uh, for sure. I was shocked that Doug did not go first round. Yeah, I, I, I was shocked. I actually that. forgot about him. Um, yeah. But I will say, uh, go pick your favorite team over on our Twitter page. We're going to put the poll up tonight. Uh, the graphic will be in the comments to refresh your memory on who everybody picked. Uh, but go over to twitter.com slash nerds to go vote for your favorite team. Um, and keep the winning streak alive, baby. I'm going to rub this headband three in a row. Let's make it four. No. Let's make it four. I'm the Tom Brady of nonsense drafts right here. Oh, my gosh. No. Uh, but I think that Can't wraps it up, it. though, uh, for this podcast that episode. That will be that for this evening. Um, again, Mario, we hope that you feel better soon. Thank yes. you. We hope that we did not uh, burn down the podcast while you were in bed sick. Um, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, yep. As always, check out our uh, schedule for the week because we stream all but two days a week. It's not updated currently. Oh, so, so don't look at it. Don't look at it, but it's it's pretty or much... Or it could just be fun. It could be like just total crapshoot. Just log yeah. in yeah. around this time and just and just see what happens. It's just a grab bag. It could be crap. It could be great. You it's, just don't know. It's the standard It's the uh, standard schedule, though. We've got, uh, we've got Arcade tomorrow. We've got... Uh, oh, 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 this oh, is... I'm glad that we oh, went over the schedule for a second because we have a little bit of an announcement for everybody here. Uh, so usually Thursday nights are Mike and I's night for um, to host Arcade, mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> we are coming up very shortly on a new series with my boy Loki, Loki. Um, and we did want to work in um, a time that we could talk more in depth about topics that we don't, time just like doesn't allow for uh, here on the main podcast. And so we will be starting a brand new show in the lineup on Thursday nights called Sofa Social because we're not antisocial. We are Sofa Social. So uh, come join the newest Nerd Social Club on Thursday evenings with us right here in our living room. You can hang out on the couch with us and we are going to talk um, everything nerd. It's going to be fun. Uh, we'll have show reactions and movie reactions. We'll have really stupid games like uh, things similar to the drafts. Um, we'll talk, we'll talk all, all things nerdy. We'll yep. let our dork flags fly and, uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a great, great time ad for all, or maybe it won't. And then maybe you just it log won't. Out. I don't, don't know. know. Whatever, but I'll be there. So, but we, we, the <clears throat> main purpose though, is to set up, uh, some good conversation about Loki coming up. Uh, in the next couple of weeks. Yes, it'll be it'll so, be much fun, much it's fun. Be fun. So come hang out with us this Thursday, um, and then Friday is a night off, and Saturday we are back to hell. Um, we're playing D and D with uh, your favorite WooTubers. Rolling the dices, baby. The so dices. The the dices. Mike needs to go to bed tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then Sunday a night off, and then we'll be starting over. Yes. Um, so hopefully you'll see uh, Mario if all goes well again yep. on Monday night. Paul next week so, so thank you guys so much for watching thank you chat for interacting thank you guys for stepping in and drafting for mario and lee tonight and yep. since mario's not here we get to do it right? and well and always i am a freaking nerd mike i'm freaking nerd b yo stay freaking nerdy, nerdy y'all